Ms. Clark, I want to return to the exchange you had with Senator Cornyn. We discussed defunding the police. You testified it's not the department's position or your position that the police should be defunded. So have you changed your mind since you wrote an op-ed in 2020 that the police should be defunded? Um, thank you, Senator. I've never supported defunding uh, the police. I'm here representing the department, which certainly does not support uh, defunding the police. We are actively dispensing hundreds millions of dollars in grants to support our local and state law enforcement standing on the front lines of, of the crime. The title and hate of the crime. article said defund the police. Um, the, the article talked about some of the challenges that law enforcement faces today with respect to, for example, mental health needs that too often fall at the doorsteps of law enforcement. Um, I'm here representing the department today, which believes deeply in ensuring that our law enforcement uh, agencies have the support and resources needed to do their work. So, okay, so it sounds to me like you changed your position, or, or at least your position from 2020 is not the department's position, but let's move on from funding the police to protecting the police. Um, what's the department's latest position on qualified immunity? Should the qualified immunity that police officers enjoy from frivolous lawsuits be changed in any way? Um, that question, Senator, I would likely have to direct to my Office of Legislative Affairs. I'm happy to take the, the question back for... The Office of Legislative Affairs just represents you to Congress. You're the policymaker. You're the one that would have input on these things. What's the department's position on qualified immunity? Should it, should it change in any way? And presumptively, given the debates we've had here in Congress for the last year, if you think it should change, I assume you should think it should be lower, that it shouldn't yeah. be heightened. Um, Senator, I want to be very clear. I've, I've not, in the Civil Rights Division, taken a position on this issue. I can't speak to whether or not there's another component inside the agency that has spoken to this, but this is not within the purview of the Civil Rights Division. Okay, so police officers enjoy qualified immunity. What kind of immunity do prosecutors and judges enjoy? I, I, I don't know the answer uh, the an to that question. I think question. the answer is absolute immunity. So the lawyers who have constructed our system have given themselves absolute immunity, I just want to say for the record, while police officers only get qualified immunity. Another way we protect the police is when they're acting in their official capacities, we defend them from frivolous lawsuits. Do you think it would make police officers less likely to perform their job zealously if they knew that political bosses were going to hang them out to dry and subject them to financial bankruptcy and ruin if they were sued for actions in the course of duty? Um, I stand in full support of our law enforcement agencies across the country, Senator. Um, uh, in the rare instance where a law enforcement officer um, may be pursued, for example, for a, a, a violation of law, I believe that under our Constitution, they are entitled to counsel and, uh, and, and protection uh, in the course of that of that lawsuit, but I, I support our law enforcement. And it's the department's officers. longstanding policy to either provide that representation or to reimburse legal fees if, for some reason, they can't provide representation. Isn't that right? I'd want to take that question back just to make sure I get you an accurate answer, Senator. I raise this because right now the department is hanging out to dry four United States marshals who defended the courthouse in Portland from street militias in the summer of 2020. They're defending dozens of others, but for some reason they won't defend these four, and the department won't give us any answers why they won't defend these four, who I point out have all been returned to unrestricted active duty in high-risk positions. Presumably, if they were subject to criminal investigation or IG investigation or some other kind of disciplinary action, the department wouldn't be sending such marshals back into high-risk situations where violence, even lethal violence, is likely to be used. Ms. Clark, were you or your... Uh, uh, division involved at all in the decisions about representing U.S. Marshals who were present defending the courthouse in Portland in 2020? Senator, I, I believe that this is a, a matter that is most appropriate for our civil division. I'd want to get you an accurate answer. I'd welcome any I, I know it, I know it's most appropriate this. for the civil division. I do know that. But I'm asking you if you had any conversations in the department at any time about representing U.S. Marshals who defended the Portland Courthouse? I'd want the chance to take that question back and make sure I'm getting you an accurate answer, Senator. So, you, so is your answer at the moment that you do not recall that you were engaged in any such conversations? Well, if that's I, your answer, that's fine. I understand you have a lot of conversations every day. 
I'm generally um, f familiar with the matter that you referenced that I believe is with our civil division. I'd want to make sure I get you an accurate response, Senator. So I'm happy to take a question back Thanks, uh, to I the would, department. I, I would appreciate that. I look forward to getting the answer. 